Hey, this is Nick Hawks with Medio Scientific, and in this video, I'll be walking you through how to use the Metsci console. Uh, you go to console.medioscientific.com. You can follow along and do this as I'm doing it. Uh, I've already got an account. If you need to sign up, you can sign up. Before we sign in, in my case, what I wanted to do is give you an idea of what uh, where where in the flow console is. So it's actually right here uh, where it says Metsci console. Now the the kind of signal flow or the packet flow starts off over here with a sensor. The sensor senses a leaky pipe and says, oh, I'm gonna send out a packet. That packet is a coded packet. It sends out over the airwaves. It's received by a hotspot. The hotspot then takes that same packet and sends it over the internet to the Metsci console to a LoRaWAN network server. There's actually a tiny little step here we're skipping. It's actually a giant step, but so complicated and uh, not applicable here that you don't need to know about it. But just so you know, it's there. Um, so the packet goes to the console. The console decodes the packet and it says, hey, all this gobbledygook code actually means that a pipe is leaking or that it's 72 degrees Fahrenheit or that the wind is 12 miles an hour out of the east or whatever it is. It sends that information onto an application. Uh, in this case, we're going to be sending it on to the Metsci app, but you could send it to a bunch of different apps or what's called integrations. And that's it, that's the flow. Today, we are going to be sticking in the Metsci console. So let's go back to that and go ahead and sign in. Now this is the demo account, so I've set up one device uh, as a little bit of a demo for you. So it's gonna show um, what we've got going on on the dashboard here. The dashboard is the first thing that you're gonna see when you sign in. Uh, you're gonna see one, two, three, four cards. Of those four cards, only one is really important, and that is the active devices. You can see I put one on here, it's never been seen. Um, I put it on here just for a demo, just so you can see something. We'll get way more into devices in another video. The active gateways card refers to a normal uh, ChirpStack instance. So this is a ChirpStack instance running on Helium. Helium is a giant uh, amount of, it's a giant network that is global. And if we were to show all of the active gateways on here, it would take forever for this page to load. If you wanna see where those gateways are, you can go to explore.helium.com. You can see they're pretty much all over the developed world. Um, anywhere that's uh, pretty suburban in the developed world, suburban or urban, you're gonna see it. In my hometown of San Diego, they are all over the place. So you got great coverage pretty much anywhere suburban, urban, uh, uh, developed world. So that's why there's nothing on gateways there. It would take way too long to load. On the device data rate usage, that's kind of geeky. I'll do another video on it. Uh, you'll see it there. You don't really need to worry about it. It almost always gets set automatically for you. And then there's gateway map. You, uh, won't, you won't need that because you can use the Helium Explorer for that. So that's what's going on in the dashboard. Before we go way further, let's jump over to tenant details so you get an idea of kind of what you're getting with this, uh, with this console and why you might want to use it. Every console account that uh, signs up, you get 400 uh, free data credits. So you get those 400 free here. A data credit costs $0.0001. Uh, the minimum amount of data credits you need to buy when you're going to renew is going to be 50,000. 50,000 sounds like a lot of data credits, but let's kind of go through all of those numbers. So uh, what is 400 data credits? What is that good for? It's enough to add a device, um, run it for a couple days, depending on how often you're sending packets, but it's a great way to start. Uh, how much is 50,000 data credits? 50,000 data credits times 0 0.0001 is $5. And if you were to buy 50,000 data credits, what would you be able to run? Well, you could be running a device that sends out one data credit 24 hours a day, once an hour for 365 days a year, uh, just under 9,000 DC. So if you if you buy 50,000 data credits, you can run a couple devices. Now, it does depend on the device, a weather station sending tons of different data like wind speed and direction and temperature and barometric pressure and solar radiation and all the other stuff will send way more data credits per kind of transmission. But for minimal stuff, you'd be sending one DC at a time. So that stuff's pretty straightforward. Um, it's actually cheaper. You could run this console yourself or you could hire someone to run it uh, if you'd like. In order for that to be worth it, you'd have to run 25 to 30 million data credits a month through a console. And if you get to that point, please reach out, let me know. I will introduce you to the folks who can run that for you. Um, but up until then, it's cheaper to to do to use the Metsci console. The last thing I will direct your attention to here um, is this current value. It may be set to two. This is the number of packets, uh, duplicate packets you buy um, so the number of hotspots that hear your packet, you just set this to one. Uh, hit it one, hit update max value. We'll talk about why you might wanna change that later, but for right now, I just want you to see where things are in the world. Okay, 
So we'll go back to the dashboard where we were before. Uh, we talked about all these. If you hit configuration, you'll notice you can't change any of these. If you really need to change something here, you're kind of geeky, uh, go ahead and let me know. I'll jump in the admin side and change it for you, but you pretty much don't need to. If you go down to users, uh, let's say you and your business partner, you and an admin or who else are doing this, you can add a tenant user, super easy, put in their email, uh, whether or not they're the tenant admin, et cetera, et cetera, hit submit and you'll have a new user. On the API keys, we'll use those later to connect this into another piece of software. For right now, I just want you to see that it's there. The next part is kind of the, the part here that uh, trips people up, especially if they're new to ChirpStack, which is kind of the way that we are running this LNS. And that is this idea of device profiles and applications. We're gonna skip gateways. We already talked about those. Remember, these are all the, uh, the gateways all around the world. We're just gonna focus on device uh, profiles and applications. So the way that ChirpStack works, the way that this console works is, let me bring, uh, bring up something and show you here. Um, is, you know, pop myself in here just to say hi. Hey, um, a device profile is an application template. In that template, you're going to have uh, different things, and we'll talk about naming conventions later, but it's basically a template that makes it easy for you to set up another application. What is an application? It's a group of a bunch of devices that are all pretty standard. Maybe it's a bunch of parking sensors, maybe it's a bunch of trash can fill level sensors, maybe it's traffic counters, et cetera, et cetera. All of those things in there are called devices. And you can separate devices out there all in the same kind of application, in the parking sensor application. Maybe they're in a different location. Now, you could do this in two ways. You could have uh, one application for a garage on the S, uh, we, sorry, west side of town, one application for a garage on the east side of town if they're going to do different things. But maybe you want to break up the devices in there. And to do that, you use tags. And so you might have a tag for the level one uh, parking structure slots. You might have a, a device... Sorry, a tag for the devices on level two, level three, et cetera, et cetera. So that's how device profiles, applications, and devices and tags work. All right, so that's kind of what that um, looks like. We'll jump into those pretty quickly in here just so you get to see it. So here's a device profile. I set one up for you. If you want to add a new one, I'll, I'm doing a, a video on that. But this is what it kind of looks like on the inside. We'll go through all the details on these later. But just right now, I want you to see the, the very broad strokes. So that's a device profile. It tells you kind of what that profile will look like. That will allow you to create an application. Uh, I've already created an application here. This one's called test application. You can think of this as like the parking sensor application is what we could name that. And in that application is a device. In that device are a bunch of other settings. We'll check those out in another video. So that's kind of the left side of the screen in ChirpStack. That's what's going on there. We'll do videos on all of that separately. I just want you to see the, the big picture overview. The only other thing to see up here is you can see how many data credits we have. So 400 right now, this is a fresh account, haven't used it at all yet. And if you click on this little head up here, you've got a bunch of different options. One of them is purchase data credits. We talked about what that might take. Um, if you wanna purchase them, you'll need to fill out a bunch of information and it will just be pretty easy. If you wanna purchase 50,000, which is the minimum amount, that's gonna cost you five bucks, hit the purchase, fill out the information and do that. Um, if you want to look for documentation, the fellow who runs this has a documentation site. Um, it is pretty sparse. In fact, I think there's a lot more information on this MetSci course, so I would stick with the MetSci course. But if you want to get geeking in the weeds, go ahead and hit that. If you have a question, you can't actually see it down here on the bottom of my screen, but there'll be a blue bar on the bottom of your screen way down here that says, if you have a question, email me at console-help at medioscientific.com. If you don't want to do email, just hit service request, open up a new service request, Hey, this is my problem. This is the details, et cetera, et cetera. Hit submit. I'll get that and I will help you out. So that's service request. Uh, migrate from legacy. If you're coming over from the Helium network, if you're already a Helium user, you can use that. For most of you, don't worry about it at all. It's just there for a group of folks that, uh, that might need it. Uh, your profile, standard stuff, name, address, company name, all that crap. Um, all this is public. I'm not super worried about this being out there. If you want to come say hi, I'm usually here on Mondays between two and three. Um, and then that's it. Then you can sign out. So that is what is going on in the uh, the MetSci console. I think we went through all of the stuff that you might need to know just to kind of get started. We'll be doing, or I'll be doing videos on everything in here, all the details. So you can walk through the whole thing soup to nuts and have a really good idea of what's going on. But for right now, I think you've got a great way, a uh, great idea to start. And let's crack on to the next video. If you haven't signed up for a console account yet, remember to go to console.medioscientific.com. I'll put a link down in the description. Sign up for it, poke around a little bit, and then cruise on to the next video and we'll get started. Rock and roll.